Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In recent times I have noticed some talk about cursed rockets. I have seen people call my rockets cursed, which is completely wrong. All of my rockets are wonderful. Uh, but on Twitter there are certain cursed configurations which show a lack of imagination. Generally speaking, uh, there are things that involve SLS cores being slapped into things that shouldn't get things slapped onto them and like three starship uh, super heavy cores or something like that some it usually involves threes okay space shuttles hanging off of things they shouldn't be hanging off of uh, you get the picture uh, but one configuration that is actually at least something that could get off the ground uh, has not been tried yet and it is genuinely a cursed configuration it is a horrible idea uh, but I couldn't resist, especially after I saw people asking Tori Bruno, uh, the head of ULA, about additional configurations for Vulcan, and they, they just weren't satisfied with the obnoxiousness of having a three-core Vulcan heavy. He has that model uh, in his office, and that's enough for me, uh, but they, they wanted more. Well, allow me to give you more. This is the truly cursed configuration, the Vulcan 3. That's right, a Vulcan rocket stylized as a Delta 3 rocket. So that it has nine boosters and it has an oversized Hydrolox upper stage like the Delta 3 did. I don't know why there's a 1.5 meter per second reading there. Let's ignore that. Anyway, um, it is the EUS. It is the SLS second stage. Unfortunately, unlike the Delta III, the boosters don't really extend the full length of the core. Well, it's not quite the full length of the core, but not as much of the core as the Delta III's boosters did. But we really don't have very long boosters until you get a much larger diameter. Basically, if you want something that's really long, you have to jump to like three meters, uh, like the Titan boosters. So it's best to just stick with the ones that are actually going to be on Vulcan, which is what these are. These are Gem 63 XLs. And one caveat being that the Delta III lit six on the ground and then three in the air. We're going to light them all on the ground to get off the ground. It'll give us a healthy thrust weight ratio, but if we only lit six, we would not have a healthy thrust weight ratio. So we have to light all of them. Uh, the EUS is only partially filled. There's actually two tanks. There's that tank and then there's another uh, liquid oxygen tank with a separate uh, volume reading here. So what I've done is I fueled it to 11 minute burn time basically. And that is again because it's not a good idea to have it all full. The trajectory turns out really bad. Our goal is to lift 13 tons to geosynchronous transfer orbit. This, like the Delta III, would not at all be a reasonable configuration for low Earth orbit. And so there's really no point testing its low Earth orbit capacity. As far as I can tell, it's something like 30 tons. So, yeah, we are going to throttle up. And that tank is locked right now so that the clamps don't refuel it. Um, SAS on and ignition of the BE-4s. And ignition of the boosters. All nine. That gives us a very nice thrust weight ratio, as you can see. It's also not efficient to carry the other three boosters after these, uh, after the first six separate, if uh, we were going to light only six on the ground, because the core already has a thrust weight ratio of one at that point. So we're going fairly steeply, but probably we shouldn't go too steep. But the thrust weight ratio has me bothered. I don't want to turn too far away from prograde. And booster separation one, two, and three. There they go. And so now we're just Vulcan core plus SLS upper stage EUS. Probably we'll want to get rid of the fairings as soon as possible. So again, 13 tons to GTO is what we're going for here. And fairing set. Well, off those go. 
It's just a uh, dummy tank there with av gas. We will have to toss this up a little bit high so that it has time, the upper stage has time to burn. We can unlock its propellants now. I don't know. We need 2400 to the GTO burn. I won't wait until the equator or anything. We'll just burn direct for simplicity's sake. Okay, separation and ignition. Again, 11 minute and 12 second burn time altogether because of the underfueling, otherwise it'd be more than 15 minutes. I mean, we could fully fuel it, it's just that we would need to toss it even higher in order to have enough burn time. Potentially, we'll see. I haven't tested it yet after all. So, fizz warp. Okay, I think we could have probably gone lower than what we did. Yeah, I think we're, we're pretty close. I think if we went a little bit more shallow, we should be able to make it with the 13 tons. Geostationary orbit is 35,786 kilometers. Just 17,606 kilometers, but actually the delta V wise, it's not that far away. So we're going to try this again with a different trajectory. Seeing how it worked last time, maybe we could fully fuel the EUS and get more out of it. So let's try it out. Let, let's go with a fully fueled EUS instead of partially fueling it and see what happens. Okay, well. Here we go again now with a fully fueled EUS. So we're heavier. Not quite a thousand tons yet though. And we're carrying 14 tons of payload now. Uh, ignore burn times, that's not right at the moment. SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. And launch. You can hardly tell it's heavier. Well, we better start turning quickly. Falcon 3, everybody. Please inform ULA of its magnificence. Okay, and booster set 1. Booster set two, booster set three. Fairing separation. Okay, is it high enough? Hmm, we'll see. All right, separation and ignition. Well, that's a lot of delta V. It's not a whole lot of acceleration, though. We are going down this time. Which is sort of good, actually. We have a positive periapsis. I mean, we've made orbit, but we're still going down. <laughs> Uh, I guess we don't really need to have any pitch. I think it mostly worked out. But now are we going to have the Delta V? Ah, uh, not quite. Uh, so, it's somewhere between 13 and 14 tons to geostationary transfer orbit. I don't think I could have done that too much better. Uh, so it's about right. The toss up was just right so that we caught ourselves in time. And uh, yeah, everything seemed to be pretty close to what I wanted. So, yep. This is a 14 ton payload. Uh, 13 tons would definitely have worked out. So somewhere between there. 
And Falcon 3, everybody. I mean, what can you say? Uh, should it ever be done? No. But, well, if somebody had to do it, I guess it, it ought to have been me. <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.